Good morning. I'm glad, thrilled that you're able to join us this morning for worship here at Barnesville Baptist Church. Again, this is a time when we can spiritually be joined together to lift up the Lord God Almighty and to gain strength from each other and to be in one accord. I pray that you're well. I pray that you will continue to have a focus on who God is in your life and what God is requiring of us at this time. To share joy, to be wise, to be prudent, to make sure that we're uh, doing everything we can to help end this time of crisis. But at the same time, to never lose faith and to never have a fearful heart or a fearful spirit because the Lord is always with us. What I would like us to do as we begin this morning in our worship time so I'm calling the church, all of the church, not just Barnesville, God's people, to a time of prayer. I want to challenge you for every morning in April, and we have March 30th and 31st still, you can practice. But for every morning in April, I'm asking that you will read 2 Chronicles 7, 14, chapter 7, verse 14, and that you will pray for your country. That you'll pray that God will be exalted. That people that don't know him, the lost hurting ones out here that are fearful and have no hope, that they will seek out the Lord Jesus Christ and receive the salvation, the hope, and the peace that you and I celebrate every day. And that we will be the church that God wants us to be and that God will hear our prayers and heal our land. So let's start out our worship time reading 2 Chronicles 7. 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Every morning in April, please, all Christians, all believers, pray in one accord that this will be the day that we rejoice that God gave us this day but also that we'll be the people that God wants us to be and that he'll heal our land. We're going to start out with a beautiful hymn this morning. It is well with my soul. Join with me as we sing this beautiful song. And I pray it is well with your soul this day. Yeah. 
sing it, church. With my soul. Please join me in the responsive reading. For the life of flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. For I hear the slander of many, fear is on every side, 
while they take counsel together against me, they scheme to take away my life. Those also who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and play deception all the day long. But I, like a deaf man, do not hear, and I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. I am reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and am repulsive to my acquaintances. Those who see me outside flee from me. Even my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. They also gave me gall for food, and my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, and from the words of my groaning? Into your hands I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Join with me now as we look at another beautiful, faithful hymn. Count your blessings as we go through this time of social distancing, as we go through this time of fear and worry. One of the greatest things we can do as a believer is count the blessings that the Lord has given us. We can name them one by one, and that will guard our heart, soul, and mind from Satan attacking us. Let's sing together the beautiful hymn, Count Your Blessings. Journey, 
Sing from your hearts. Blessings came in one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, in one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen, amen, amen. I told you that there's good in everything. And that earlier this week, I shared with you that we, when we get back and able to come back together and gather together, we'll appreciate each other more. We'll appreciate the fellowship. We'll appreciate the love that we share. And I know for a fact, after you listening to me lead you a couple of songs, you're going to appreciate Nina a whole lot more when we return back together. I miss Jan and Nina. I miss all of you. But it's awesome that we can meet this way, still worship the Lord our God, Jesus Christ, as a church family, and still gather the strength and the praise that the Lord deserves and the strength that we need to carry through. I'm going to have a word of prayer. I will ask you, please, to pray for Susan. Um, she's, uh, as you know, is a resident um, at a nursing home in Mount Airy. So I ask you to pray for that nursing home and also for Susan and for all that are uh, suffering this day. I want to thank our deacon, our chairman, deacons, our treasurer, David Bennett, for coming and, and videoing the prayer uh, for you and I. And I would like to take this time to pray for our country, for our leadership, for our president, for our governors, that we'll make the right decisions, first to honor God in every way and for the safety of of the people of this great country, America. So let us pray. Father, I lift up to you now the crisis that we're in. First, I pray that you will be honored and praised through all this. I pray that when this is all done and passed, that they will know that you are God, Jehovah, the great I am, and that you have sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross, and you raised him from the dead to give everyone salvation if they choose to call on the name above all names, Jesus. To allow everyone to have full access to you through your son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit dwelling within us as believers in you, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray even now that your power will overflow. Oh, Holy Spirit, I pray even now you will empower us to be positive every day. To stay focused on the word. And, and, and take this time to study your word even more. To be focused on praying for each other and praying for the leadership of this great country that you allow us to live in and to worship in. I pray the decisions will be made because of honoring you and for the safety of all mankind here that live in this great country and around the world. Lord, we have many that are sick. We have many that are, are not working. We have it's times that we've never faced before, and then what comes with what comes with that is fear and doubt and discouragement. Lord, I pray even now that Holy Spirit, you will empower us even more now than ever before to stand on the promises, to count our blessings, to be able to say without a shadow of doubt, it is well with my soul because of Jesus Christ, because of you, Lord. Let us be the light in this negative time, the shine, the hope, the peace, the joy, and always be ready to explain the source, you, Lord Jesus, and the reason, your hope and peace and love that you gave us by believing on you and calling on your name for salvation. Lord, be with us this day and be with our country and be with us every day. And Lord, if there's anyone that doesn't know you that's hearing or my voice, Holy Spirit, may you stir their, stir their hearts today and they call on you for the forgiveness of their sins for the hope and peace and joy that only you can give, Lord Jesus. That's my prayer. And I pray this in your son's precious name. Amen and amen. The last song that we're going to sing this morning before we look at God's word, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. It's a beautiful hymn to him to know that no matter what we're facing, we have the blessed assurance that Jesus is ours. Let us sing.
is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Verse 2. My prayer is that is your story. That we're doing everything in our power to praise our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ all day long. Does not mean we're not to be focused and be aware of everything we're doing and everything the people around us and all of our circumstances. But it means that we're never to allow anything that comes our way to keep our to, to stop us from being focused on who Jesus is and his love for us. You know, some days we wake up to sunshine, but the birds are singing and all is well. One of the things that Randy left me, some pretty good instructions, matter of fact, was the bird feeders outside my kitchen window, attached to the tree in a pole that I'm sure Randy put up. And I was given pretty strict instructions that I was to continue to put seed in there and, and to make sure there was a bird bath and make sure them birds were able to eat. And, and I always wonder because next door to me, the neighbor has one across the way, the neighbor has one. There's some well-fed birds up here uh, singing away and enjoying. But I have come to appreciate in the morning the song of the birds. 
for they worship the Lord in their way. And what do I mean by that? The grateful, you can tell. They're grateful for the seed. They're grateful for the food. They don't tell you. They don't come to you and thank you. But it's by their, their just peaceful way of the way they go about life. So yes, yeah, some days we wake up to sunshine and singing. But some days we do wake up to fear and doubt and discouragement. I know that. So whatever your situation is today, physically, emotionally, or spiritually, I am fully aware that it is real in your life because it's real in mine. But I want to remind all of us today that God knew this would happen already. I want to reassure you and give you the blessed assurance to know that this virus, this sickness, this pandemic, all this that's going on in our lives with right this moment, jobs being lost, people's incomes being threatened, none of this took our God by surprise. He was fully aware. And he had prepared us for this very day. He knows that we are weak, so he reminded us that we need to call upon him daily. Not just for our food and not just for forgiveness of sins and to continue to give us the strength so that we would be guarded from Satan's attacks. So I, I encourage you to call out to the Lord every morning of every day. Today is one of those days in the past week and weeks to come probably that we need to hear more of Jesus and his word than ever before. So that we can be prepared for the battle that lays ahead of us against Satan and his attacks. Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Let me ask, challenge you this morning. If you're feeling discouraged or low or fearful at this time, I would like you to take this question that this passage of scripture asked of you and answer that. For example, if God is for us, who can be against us? And the answer is no one, church. Let me say that again. If God, the creator and sustainer of all things, is for us, who can be against us? The answer is no one, no thing, no evil, nobody. Trust that. What can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ, church? Nothing. So we are victorious because of Jesus Christ as believers in him. And his love that sustains us and holds us keeps us that way for eternity. Have faith in that. Trust in that. Take courage in that. Take encouragement in that. Story from John Ortberg that Pastor shares a story from his own life, meeting a child while surfing. He said, one day when I was out surfing, there was no one else in the water. He said, in fact, there was no one around at all except for a guy the size of Goliath doing martial arts down on the beach. After I'd been out a while, he said, a tiny wisp of a child came paddling up out of nowhere. I couldn't believe he was out there by himself. He pulled his little board right up next to mine. He was so small that he hardly needed a board. He could have stood up in the ocean on a frisbee, John says. Anyway, he started chatting with me like we were old friends. He told me his name was Shane. He asked me how long I've been surfing. I asked him how long he'd been surfing. Seven years, he said. How old are you? With a smile, Shane said, eight. He asked me about my kids and my family. Then he said, what I like about surfing is that it's so peaceful. And you meet a lot of nice people out here. You're a nice guy, Shane, I said. That's why you meet nice people, because you're a nice guy. We talked a while longer. Then I asked him, Shane, how did you get out here in the first place? My dad brought me, he said. Then he turned around and waved at the nearly empty beach. And then I saw that Goliath, a man doing martial arts, waving back. And he said, hi, son. And he called out to him. Then I knew why Shane was so at home in the ocean. It wasn't his size. It wasn't his skill. It was who was sitting on the beach. His father was always watching. And his father was a Goliath big man. Shane wasn't really alone at all. Neither are we. 
Our big God is watching over us every moment of every day. I pray that brought you encouragement to know that our God is so big. He's so strong and so mighty that nothing can protect, nothing can come against you that he cannot protect you from. This story reminds me of a Sunday school openings when I was a child. I would like to know, and I'll ask one day when I see you all gathered back again, how many of you grew up going to Sunday school when they would have openings? You wouldn't go right to your class as we do now. You wouldn't get your donut, your coffee, your juice. Wouldn't get your book and sit down. We would all gather together every Sunday morning before Sunday school. We would sing courses that they taught us. We would take roll. We would celebrate birthdays. We even once in a while would get a lucky seat. And maybe won a prize. Then we'd go to class. My mom and dad taught us this, my, this song to me. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. Now I know for a fact you would just love for me to sing that. You've already heard me butcher three songs already this morning. And I know there's nothing more important than you just listening to me sing this song. But for some reason, my wife encouraged me to reach out. So listen, if you would, to these beautiful angels singing, My God is so big. nothing our God cannot do. God's holy word will bring sunshine in your life if you trust it, if you read it, if you believe it, if you stand on it. He's bigger than all your fears. He's bigger than anything that could come your way. Our God is a God of love, God of power, and God of all knowing. But you must believe. Psalms 30 verse 5, Psalms 30 verse 5 says, for his anger, talking about God, lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Amen, church? How about another awesome passage found in Psalms 121? Psalms 121, 1 through 8. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is at your side. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all, your, all harm. He will watch over your light. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now. Did you hear that, church? Both now and forevermore. And I say, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love and protection. Church, our help comes from the Lord and only comes from the Lord, the true maker, the true God, maker of heaven and earth. It's all a gift from him. Psalms 121 reminds us of a couple things that God will do to help us get through this time of fear and doubt and worry. God watches over you and I every moment of every day. Verse three and four of Psalms 121 says it again. He will not, God speaking, he will not let your foot sleep. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Our God is always there for us. He's always watching over his children. He's always providing, wrapping his arms around us and giving us the strength, the protection, the source that we need to continue moving on. Church, listen. Jesus Christ loves you. He loves me. We're getting ready to celebrate Easter. I believe the greatest holiday, the greatest celebration a Christian can have. 
On Good Friday, when the Lord gave his life willingly, and on Easter morning, when Father God Almighty raised him from the dead. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he cherishes us. That's how much he wants to renew, to renew us, to be again in right relationship with the Father God Almighty through his Son, Jesus Christ. He proved that at Calvary. He gave his life willingly for you and I so that we can be free from sin, Satan's grip of fear, doubt, and discouragement. We can be free of this discouragement. We can be free of the fear. We can be free of all the doubts. We cannot be freed of the risk, the living in the world. It's part of who God, what Jesus said we were to do, to live in the world, not to be part of the world, but we have to live in it. We have to share the hope. We have to be a, uh, the beacon that God wants us to be. But we're to guard our spirit, our inner soul, our heart, so that we're not discouraged and not allow Satan to get a grip hold of that. And we can do all that because Jesus gave the victory on the Calvary, gave us the victory over Satan himself. One of my favorite hymns that I love very much, and I'm not going to sing it, it's Victory in Jesus. And you know it's my favorite hymn because I slip it into the programs over and over again throughout the year. But I do want to read the verses to you this morning because I believe there's times we sing these beautiful hymns, but we don't really listen to the words. So let me share with you, let me just read with you, read to you the words of victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Here's the chorus. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me. Let's stop there. Make it personal. Make it personal. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought Danny, and he bought Danny with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Verse 2. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. Then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Verse 3, I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing in the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. And then the chorus again. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Now that's a message of hope, church. Amen. That's a song that will lift you up. Erase all the fear and doubt in your heart, soul, and mind, and replace it with the joy that can only come from Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this morning, church, do you have a song of victory in your life right now? Or are you so discouraged and so gripped with fear and doubt that you can't hear the voice of the one that gave you the victory? You can't hear and feel the presence of the Spirit that lives within you, the Holy Spirit, that wants to embrace you and lift you and encourage you so that you can face any trial, any situation, any sickness, any addiction, any failure. You can face it head on in the victory of Jesus Christ and the power of Jesus Christ with the power of the Holy Spirit guiding us every single way. Again, we've got to be wise. We've got to make good decisions. We've got to provide for our families. We've got to do everything we can. We've got to obey the laws of the land. We've got to do all these things. That's, that's absolutely correct. But we cannot allow our inner spirit, our soul and heart and mind to be gripped by Satan for any reason, in any way, shape, or form because the victory of Jesus lives within us, the Holy Spirit. Call on him, empower him. God protects us and he listens too. The Lord watches over you. The sun will not harm you. He provides in every way. Can you say with me, the apostle, like the apostle Paul did, if God is for us, who can be against us? Say it again, church. If God is for us, which we know he is, who can be against us? Nothing, nobody, nowhere. God is your protector. He'll watch over you. God is your protector. 
to the COVID-19, from the regular flu, from every sickness and attack and failure and addiction known to mankind, your only real hope can be found in Jesus. Your peace can only be found in Jesus. Forgiveness of sins, to take the guilt away that you live with every day, to take the fear away, the, disappoint, the disappointments, the discouragement, the anger, the jealousy, all these things we all struggle with, for all that to be taken away by calling on the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Ask him for forgiveness. Ask him to come in your life. Ask him to renew you in every way. Acknowledge who he is, the Son of God, the Jesus Christ himself. Acknowledge that God raised him from the dead to give us life. Confess your sins. Not You don't have to name them one by one. You can confess them, Lord, I sinned against you and you alone. Forgive me. And he will. Whoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Church, we all know that bad things happen to good people. Let me say that again. We all know that bad things happen to good people. We know that death comes for us all unless Jesus comes first. So I'm asking you again to guard your heart, soul, and mind. And remind yourself what verse 7 of 121 said. He, God, will watch over your life. Verse 8. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now. Come on, church. Both now, today, right now, and forevermore. I heard this prayer this week I want to share with you. Lord, help us all to turn our fears into real faith in you. Let me say it again. Lord, Jesus, help us all to turn our fears into real faith in you this day. Came across a story I want to share I thought was very beautiful. A forest ranger in Yellowstone finds a bird carcass after a fire. So he kicked it over and out runs three baby chicks that were fully alive, that were protected by the mother bird's sacrifice of her own life. The bird is described as having known that there would be toxic smoke higher up in the trees. So she took her little chicks to the base of the tree where the air was much cleaner. And she would cover, she covered them with her wings, and she saved their lives at the cost of her own life. If a bird will do that for its chicks, how much more will Jesus Christ, the one that gave you life in the first place, protect and wrap his arms around you and me? Jesus gave his life on the tree also at Calvary, so that the chicks, you and I, could run free. Sealed by his blood. Victory is ours through Jesus Christ. Please, if you're listening to this today and you have never called on the saving grace of Jesus Christ, or if you're so discouraged and distraught that you don't want to even open your eyes, you don't want to face tomorrow, and there's a lot of folks in that position, listen to me. Call on the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Drop to your knees, pull over, whatever it takes, look up to heaven. You don't need anybody to intercede to you. You can call on the name of Jesus yourself and he's eagerly waiting to wrap his arms around you and forgive you and just simply say, Lord Jesus, from your heart, you gotta believe and you gotta mean it from your heart. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I have sinned against you and you alone. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you, God Almighty, for raising your son Jesus to life on the third day so that I could have life today. Lord Jesus, empower me, Holy Spirit. Send your spirit, empower me to be the child you want me to be this day. Confess, believe, and acknowledge, and you shall be saved. I want to leave you with three verses. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved, forgiven, new life, whatever you want to put there, for it is by grace, God's grace, that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. Not by works, not by anything we can do. We cannot earn our salvation. It's a gift from God. So that no one will be able to boast. You don't need anybody to intercede to you for the Lord. You call on the Lord yourself personally. How about John 3, 16 and 7? 
They're talking about Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Listen to verse 17. It's so powerful. Maybe I'm speaking to someone directly today. I hope they are. This is Jesus speaking to you through the Holy Spirit. Listen to me if you would. For God, Jesus, for God did not send his son Jesus into the world to condemn you. Let me read it again. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world or to condemn you personally. But he came to save the world through him. The church isn't here to condemn you. We're here to love you, hold you, and point you to the one that can save you and forgive you and give you eternal life, can give you peace, hope, and joy. The church can't do anything for you but to love you and point you towards the one, Jesus Christ. I want to close that with Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. You need your strength renewed? Every one of us does. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and, and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. How many of you are tired of fighting today? Tired of worrying? Tired, tired of this whole mess? Renew your strength through the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you do that? Read his word. Calling on him to have the right relationship with him. Being saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Calling on the Holy Spirit to renew the word to you. To give you a excitement about what you're reading and enlightenment enlightenment so you know he can reveal that word to you to give you the strength to get through whatever you're facing today church listen to me please and i'm saying this from my heart as your pastor we will be stronger we will gather again together in in the giving time and no one knows when but we will we will be wiser again we'll be much more grateful we will be much more prepared for the battles ahead of us as we fight this battle of the season we're in now. We're going to appreciate each other. I was joking earlier, but I wasn't joking. You don't want to listen to me sing. You don't want to listen to me lead music all day long. You, I'm sure you didn't want to listen to it then. But we do it in the name of Jesus Christ, and we do it for safety. We do it so that every one of us can come back together at a given time healthy and ready for the battle ahead of us. We'll appreciate our music. We'll appreciate our choir. We'll appreciate Jan and Nina, the choir. We'll appreciate our deacons. We'll, we're going to embrace each other, and we're going to just have a celebration like never before. I'm sure we're going to eat, because that's what we were, we're going to do. That's what we do. We're going to eat, and we're going to celebrate, and we're going to worship who God is. We will be stronger, wiser, and more grateful. In the meantime, stay focused. Stay connected. Read God's Word. Call on each other, continue to send cards, continue to email, continue to text, continue to pray. That's the most powerful thing we can do is pray for each other. Again, I will be here till noon today at the church office, 301-407-0500. I'll be sitting in my desk praying. If you want to talk or you need anything, please call that number. Anytime, any given time you want to call me, you're welcome to. My personal cell phone is 410-459-3993. When we're done with this, and we, we have other pages and other uh, um, avenues for us to send this worship out. And that's going to be, uh, be given to you through the information so you have other ways. Share this gospel message. Share the positive message. Everybody needs to hear something good and positive. But most importantly, share your faith in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for this time that we can come together. I thank you for this source of sending out your message live. Protect it, Lord. Don't let it be interfered with. Don't let Satan interfere with the message that's going out today to someone that's lost. May every one of us share this message on our own Facebook pages or or YouTubes or whatever. May we send out this message so that so many people that are lost and hurting will maybe have the opportunity to hear some good news today from you, Jesus Christ. It's not about us. It's not about Barnesville. Take the name off. It, it, we don't need our name on there. Share the message. Share the, the scripture. Share the hope. Share the peace. That's what matters. 
I pray that we will take advantage of all technology we have, every one of us, in sharing the good news today. Because our country, our world needs some good news today. And that good news only comes from you, Jesus Christ. And how you love all of us, everywhere, every, every person you gave life to, you died on the cross for. And your desire is that they all would come to know you as their Savior and Lord. May we be the church. Heal us, protect us, and watch over us. And Lord, Father, God Almighty, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, as a church body, we love you. We thank you. We're so grateful for you. Amen.